We've all seen trolls and comments about the so-called real men. Now, of course, we know that term uh, with a slightly different uh, flavor to it. We know that from, say, PUAs. You know, they talk about alpha men. And, of course, real men, we hear that in the media, too, where have all the real men gone. Now, what I want to do in this video is just, because it's been resurfacing quite a bit recently, is to break that down. What does it really mean when these men, primarily men, talk about real men? And they don't just do it on my channel. They do it on Man Will Miss channel, they do it on Barbara Russell's channel, so on and so forth. They go on and talk about real men. Uh, and they go on, of course, to criticize and denigrate, say, MGTOs, who are quote-unquote not real men. Well, there are a couple of elements here. Uh, one element uh, is something that people don't often talk about. Now, we've often mentioned that uh, using terms such as alpha and beta, really, uh, it's using, it's using fem female terminology, female, female speak, woman speak, to describe men. It's using a mode of female attribution to assign to men different qualities, alpha, beta, omega, whatever. I don't really like that much, and uh, but you know, lots of men do that. And then you also have the term real men, which is a bit more nebulous. What does that mean, though? Real men, <coughs> supposedly men that rise above the, the common stock of man. You know men who, of course, please women. I mean, ultimately, that is what it's about. So what benefit does an online troll have, or any troll in general, or, or outside of the online venue, can mean in real life too, in putting you down, in denigrating you, and, for example, there's no female audience? That's a question. That's a question that you should all pose. Well, it's pretty simple. I think it's a basic instinct, a almost subconscious instinct. <clears throat> you see, men think, whether correctly or incorrectly, that they will benefit from denigrating other men. Just as a man will throw another man under a bus, uh, in, in certain contexts will kill him for the sake of a woman by verbally denigrating another man. <clears throat> You know, why do men not uh, get behind uh, the issues with regards to false rape accusations? And they, they want to believe that other men are rapists. Why? Because it elevates their own position. It elevates their own status. It's all about status. So, um, uh, whether it's an online venue or in real life, a man who denigrates another man believes he's elevating his status, potentially, in the eyes of a female, even if there is no female there. Remember, most men are so obsessed with reproduction, with the so-called dominance hierarchy, that they have not else but on their mind but that. And so they come on, say, to my channel or even Man Women this channel. I saw several comments recently, and they say, <clears throat> what else do you expect from women when there are no real men around, and so on and so forth? Uh, you know, there was a, a lot of trolling yesterday, for example. And, of course, you know, the talk was about real men. So, basically, that's, a, that's it in a nutshell. A real man is no different to the so-called alpha male. It's, fe it's, fe it's gyno-speak. It's female terminolo terminology assigned to, to men. Uh, using, used by men uh, in an effort to denigrate other men so they themselves achieve uh, greater status, uh, even if there's no female present, even if there's no actual benefit there, or any benefit that you could see immediately. Uh, it's, it's about, so I believe, ultimately subconscious instinct on some level. Uh, we don't help our fellow men primarily, primarily um, because in a general sense, we don't have that, that's, that, that spirit of camaraderie, that spirit of brotherhood that say women all have virtually all have with each other because we do compete against each other for women and we do compete against each other for status and so we can you know, ac acquire 
the golden uterus. So that's that, the, the real man. That's really what it's about. It's just about denigrating men, so whether the female is present or not, so they can achieve greater status in the female eyes. Now there's another issue I wanted to talk about, <coughs> and it's been cropping up for a long, long time. It's the issue of evolutionary dead ends. I mention this because this is another tactic, another theme, another meme, if you will, and those who engage in the gyno-speak of talking about real men <coughs> often like to add to their poor argumentation or to their denigration that uh, any movement or any, any group of men who, that does not wish to propagate their DNA, it's just a dead end and a, a quote unquote bunch of losers. Well, a couple of things to say to this topic or to these people out there. And uh, I've seen lots of men talk in this manner, uh, not just trolls, you know, prominent, for lack of a better word, prominent traditionalists who make videos about traditionalism and cultural Marxism denigrate other men for not having children, for not propagating their DNA. So let's talk about that. A couple of angles here. A couple of ways of looking at it. Now, no one's denying, um, I am a biological determinist, so no one's denying that the purpose, for lack of a better word, and you know, henceforth, uh, when I talk about purpose, I don't really mean there's a purpose. Biology has no purpose in that sense, but you know, it's just for convenience. Purpose of life of living organisms is to propagate itself, to replicate itself. No one is denying that, at least no one with the brain. Uh, but there are some other elements to that. Now, the argument that you're a loser, for example, if you don't propagate your DNA, is a poor one. Why? Because the same people who are making this argument, um, certain people, say, in the UK, who may, might only have one child. I could make the same argument and say, well, that Chav, who lives a couple of houses down from you, he's already got five or six children. I guess you're even more of a loser than, you're also a loser because he's much more far ahead in the evolutionary game than you are. After all, uh, from an evolutionary sense, it doesn't even matter whether you raise your children well or not. All that matters uh, is whether you pop the children out. The woman pops the children out, get as many offspring, as many uh, <laughs> examples, exemplars, uh, samples of DNA out there and just have them propagate their own DNA. That's all that matters in an evolutionary sense. It doesn't matter whether you raise your child well or not. None of that matters. If you want to, li to limit yourself to strictly evolutionary terms, then that's all that matters. You can't talk about how important it is that, that fathers are there. No, you can't do that. Why? Because all that matters is that you donated your sperm and that you got some DNA out there. The more DNA, the better. That's all that matters, strictly in evolutionary terms. So if you want to use that language, uh, any man who's ha sired seven or eight or ten children is much more further ahead than you are in an evolutionary sense. It doesn't even matter whether he raped the women to do so. None of that matters. All that matters is that his DNA is out there and will likely propagate its own DNA. So <coughs> the UK with a massive problem in teenage pregnancy, so, see tons of 15-year-old mothers, I mean, these are, these are the, the genetic winners. These are the evolutionary winners as uh, a somewhat prominent traditionalist once said. So, if you want to look at those terms, there's that. Uh, all, that all that really matters is just popping the DNA out. It doesn't matter whether you're even an, an alpha male or a, a beta or a real man. It just matters that you got your genetic material out there. That's all that matters. It doesn't matter how. It doesn't matter whether you raise it or not. It doesn't matter whether or not uh, it dies as long as it lived long enough to propagate its own DNA. So that's a pretty flawed argument, if you want to argue along those lines. The other aspect of that is a bit more philosophical. Now, if you have 99.99% .99 of the species that have, you've all heard this before, but it's true, that have lived on the Earth have gone extinct. Um, that means that at some point in time, every species was around and then died out for various reasons. Uh, human beings are uh, not 
immune to this and uh, can be subject to this. Now, we often think, interestingly enough, that our great intellect, man's great intellect, uh, our, our salience, intellectual salience in comparison to other species will allow us a means of egress uh, in terms of extinction. But that's actually not true. If you look at the track record of successful species, it's the least sophisticated species, the least complex species, certainly the least intelligent, the bacteria, the, the arthropods. These are the ones that in some way, shape, or form have uh, survived in, uh, in more or less the same form with very little distinction over a period of millions and millions of years. Not the complex species. I mean, how many um, giant sloths do you see these days? You know, they died out in the Pleistocene. They were huge. Mastodons, none. Saber-toothed cats, none. Neanderthal, very, 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 very closely related relative to us, probably able to reproduce with us. Died out as well. Um, so you see what I'm getting at that it's not the complex species that will uh, that that survive usually it's the really really simple uh, uncomplicated simple simply structured dumb meaning they have almost no intellectual hardware going for them species that end up surviving why am I mentioning this well because the argument uh, in light of that is the argument that you know you have to propagate your DNA is a bit of a it's a, it's a bit of a fool's errand. I mean, whether or not an individual man or even hundreds of men uh, disseminate their DNA into the gene pool, it, it's not really going to matter in the long ter term for the species. Uh, I mean, and more importantly, we live in the now. You know, we live in the present. Uh, I mean. If, if it's so important to propagate your DNA, if that is the, the primary edict that you know, real men should follow, uh, we should be very concerned. Why? Well, because whether or not the human species survives in the next uh, few millennia or hundred thousands of years or even millions of years, eventually our sun is going red dwarf uh, and the earth will be destroyed as a result of our sun going red dwarf. Of course, that's a couple of billion years away, but it is inevitable. So whether or not, if you want to talk about posterity, posterity and legacy and what have you, it doesn't really matter in light of that. Now you want to call me a nihilist, quite the opposite. I'm saying live in the present because we don't need to be concerned about that. Just as we don't need to be concerned whether or not we uh, propagate our DNA and disseminate our DNA out into the ether. It doesn't really matter. Um, and if you want to use the argument that, you know, every living species does it, that's what you're supposed to do, well, I refer you to my previous argument, uh, previous points. Yeah, you're right, that's what every species does. And from that standpoint, it doesn't matter whether or not men are involved. It doesn't matter, the only, the only involvement a man has, has to have is to, you know, donate his sperm. Just get, get the babies out there. Get the DNA out there, that's all that matters. The guy who has, who has 12 illegitimate children is a much more of an evolutionary winner than the guy who raises one child if you want to stick to those terms and stick to that line of thinking. You know, it's simple as. So we live in the present uh, and if you want to talk about posterity that's fine but there are a lot of ways of looking at it and living in the present what matters is our contributions in the present, not whether or not our genetic legacy is going to be around in 10,000 years. And you who are so obsessed with real men, uh, that's not going to matter much either, because you have no way to ascertain one way or another whether or not your genetic legacy is going to be around in 10,000 years. You know? And the final point about these, and I'm done talking about the evolutionary aspects of it all, but these real men is that, <laughs> and I think it's amusing, uh, all these so-called real men who rant on about uh, how MGTOWs are losers and we're all mollified. Well, simple fact is, you can be a real man, can use your powers as a real man, stand in front of the court and still have everything taken away from you. 
you can be hauled off to jail and prison <laughs> and you can rant on about being a real man they're not going to care they're still going to throw you in prison and maybe you'll get raped there hey but you're a real man that doesn't happen to real men so all this real men nonsense is just that nonsense I'm going to offer a different argument here I'm going to tell you something else there are no real men there are no, no fake men, there are no lesser men, no greater men, we're just men. Yes, some of us achieve greater things, the Einsteins of the world, uh, some are infamous, you know, the Pol Pots of the world, uh, some are a <laughs> extremely, extremely mixed bag, the Obamas of the world, and so on and so forth. But at the end of the day, we're all men. And this concept of real men, it's just a myth bullshit because any man at any given moment could have his status removed and uh, be dropped right back down to the bottom of the pecking order so anyway that's all I have to say about that you know just remember there are no real men no lesser men no greater men we're just men until men get that we're just gonna be continue to be each other's throats and uh, all the trolls they don't help very much now do they if we want to develop a spirit of camaraderie and uh, foster cooperation and teamwork without letting our instincts get in the way, we need to start looking as, at the problem and we need to start looking at men as men, not as real men, not as this kind of man, alpha, beta, just men. We're just men. Take care.